Okay guys, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about one of the most important aspects of trading. In fact, I would even go as far as to say that it is absolutely fundamental to your success in trading because without this, you will not be able to become a consistently profitable trader. As you may have guessed from the video title or description, you clever clogs, I'm talking, of course, about your trading system. This is something I get asked about a lot as people seem to be really unclear about what a system actually entails. So I'll be explaining that with the help of a few diagrams that we've put together. And I even have a practical exercise to help you define your system and start building one up for yourself. But before that, I just wanted to make sure that we're all on the same wavelength with some things. So I wanted to run through a few quick definitions. Firstly, I want to clarify exactly what I mean by consistently profitable. This is a term that gets bandied around a lot, but I have a feeling that the way I believe it should be understood is a little bit different to how you'll learn it elsewhere. Now, for most people, consistently profitable means that your profits are consistent. That might mean that you make 10% a year, 5% a month, a percent a day. You know, most people hearing that phrase probably have ridiculous interpretations of what profits actually look like anyway, but basically they think that that profit is consistent. However, I see it a bit differently to that because I don't think most systems allow for entirely consistent profits. It will depend on the market characteristics at that specific time. One month, you might have better returns than another. You may even make a loss sometimes. So the way I see consistently profitable trading is actually a combination of two different things. So on one hand, you're a profitable trader. Whether you have losing months or slow weeks without any trades, it doesn't matter. Over the long term, you know that you make a net profit. You are a profitable trader. And on the other hand, you are a consistent trader. What you're doing is something that you can replicate to a certain extent time and time again. It is consistent. Therefore, if you are profitable on that one hand and you are consistent with your trading on the other hand, you just have to keep doing what you're doing and you will make money over the long term. You are a consistently profitable trader. Now, the reason this definition is important is because I want to stress how critical it is for you to focus on becoming consistent. If you're a profitable trader but inconsistent, it may mean that what you are doing can't be repeated again or that you've been riding on luck up until that point, dining out on some sort of gut feeling or intuition you had about the markets. And one day, you might not be a profitable trader anymore. However, if you're consistent, you have something to work with. If you're consistent but losing, you can figure out what parts are working and what parts aren't working. Since it's consistent, you can make alterations and see what changes happen. You don't have to question every single trade because they're not individual approaches. You can change things in the system. And likewise, if you're consistent and profitable, you just have to repeat what you've been doing time and time again to make money. And you can even then focus on enhancing your consistent approach to increase the profitability side of things or reduce your risk but it's consistent, you can do it again and again. So the first aim for any trader is not to become profitable or even to become consistently profitable, but simply to become consistent. And the only way I think you can do that is with a system. That brings me on to my second definition. What is a system? It seems that most people just use this word interchangeably with the word strategy. And both of them, people think, mean the way that you approach your trading. Now, I've even been guilty of using these terms interchangeably as well. It's been like that in our previous lessons, in our course at certain points as well. But from today, I want to change that because I realized that by not having a clearly defined separation between system and strategy, a lot of traders are struggling to become consistent. So let me assign what's in my mind from my own approach to trading, and I want to apply that to these easy terms for you so you can use them as well, so you can benefit from what I'm doing in these easy to understand ways. And by the way, before making this video, I did a quick Google search to find out how other people are defining the difference between a trading system and a trading strategy, and I must say I was very disappointed. A lot of places made it sound like your system was just like an extended version of your strategy with some overall rules. Some even just basically described an investor profile, but an investor profile isn't a system, that is an investor profile. There's already a definition for that. So for me, a trading system is your fixed process. 
It's the systematic approach you use to finding a trading opportunity, executing it and closing it, whether that's at a profit, a loss or break even. It is the fixed steps that you take every time that you don't deviate from. Now, I see this as being very different to the other definitions that I've read, which claim that it's just a collection of rules. Now, this is nonsense. Imagine I invented Coca-Cola, I'd be extremely rich, but I'd have a consistent way of making each bottle of it. That's my system for producing a bottle of Coke. It's like a recipe. If I instead gave you a list of rules, that's going to tell you what to do and what not to do overall, but it doesn't necessarily give you the exact steps you need to follow to produce a consistent bottle of Coke. So let's take a look at this diagram so I can explain it a little bit better. This is an example of a funnel you may go through to get your trade entry and ultimately your trade exit. In the first stage, you've got the biggest part because here you have all the possible assets in the world. Of course, some of you might say, oh no, but I only trade Forex or I only invest in equities. Well, that means you have already gone through that step and made the decision for whatever reason it was. But that's still part of your system. Getting to that point is still part of your overall system. So essentially, you need to work your way from having all the assets in the world to not only picking a single asset, but also being able to pick a good area to trade, deciding on your amount at risk and how it's going to be executed. That takes you through a series of steps and this is your system. You're going through the funnel, whittling it down from many options to one. These steps are fixed and they don't change for every trade that you're trying to find. They stay the same every time like when we do our weekly technical analysis videos. That's one of our fixed steps to find markets that are in high activity areas where there are significant levels on our side so then we can, in the next step, execute dependable trades on the intraday timeframes. So this is maybe step two on this diagram that you see on screen, although the steps in that diagram are just made up and you'll most likely have many more steps than that in reality. But now we know these steps, or when we do know these steps, we then need to know how we're going to fulfill those steps. However, since the markets are dynamic and all situations are context specific, this means that each step is going to vary somewhat. So you need to approach them in slightly different ways depending on the situation that you find yourself in. This is where your strategies come into things. So the system is mapping the overall process, the steps that you follow, whereas you have a different strategy for each step and that will vary each time. For example, if we talk about the first step of picking an asset, a lot of people are just saying like, oh, I just choose Euro US dollar because it's the most popular. Or someone might say, oh, I just pick the market that looks the best to me. Well, in one way or another, there is a strategy at play there. There's a strategy behind what you're doing in order to pick what you may think is the best market. In other words, your system has set out the objective of finding the best market to trade for whatever characteristics that you define in your system and your strategy for that step has helped you to pick the right candidate. So to break it down further, your system is essentially fixed and at each step you're asking yourself what and why. What are you trying to do at this step and why are you trying to do it? Whereas your strategies are variable and they're answering the question, how? How are you going to achieve that step? And these questions are all really important to answer. I've said it loads of times before that what you're doing with your strategy and your system must make logical sense. So if you're not able to answer what you're doing or why you're doing it, you may need to revisit your own development and learn a bit more about the method that you're using. So since I want to keep this video just about the system for now, I won't go into too much detail about strategies just yet, but let me just quickly address a few points about that because some people are getting everything confused and they think that their entire system is just one strategy that they're following and this is why they're not consistently profitable. And when something goes wrong, it means that they really don't know what they can do about it. They don't know what step is suffering, they don't know what tweaks they need to make. But by defining your system and your strategies, you segregate the steps, which means it's much easier to see what part you need to optimize and it's much easier to learn quicker as well. Like, let's imagine, for example, an American football game. The overall objective, of course, is to win, 
However, if you think the objective of winning the game is one big strategy, you won't know what part you need to improve and you can't learn from other situations and probably you won't win. You won't get the same plays each time. You won't even have the same teams or necessarily the same players each time. So you can't just do the same thing all the time. Instead, you have a range of strategies and different plays that you can use. You know that if these guys run this way and you pass the ball to this guy over here, then in some situations, depending on the context, that will work wonders to achieve your objective. And in other situations, it won't be so suitable. Your strategy changes. You can't make an overall strategy out of the game. It's variable. So this is why we have our fixed steps. Yes, we want to get a touchdown. We're on our first down. What strategy is going to get us there with the context how it is right now? But that's the step. So if we take a look at step three in this imaginary system that we put here, we're looking for an opportunity. So if you only have to focus on that section, not the steps before it and not the steps after it, but literally just the step where you've already decided the market that you're following, the area that's interesting, and now you're searching for an opportunity, it means in future, you can find many more situations that are the same as that one and apply the same rationale and thinking that you've had before in that step, isolated. Now this happens to me a lot. So you know, the overall markets might not look identical, but if you've whittled it down to a situation where you're having a particular interaction around a certain area, and you're just focusing on that step, then you might see that there were certain strategies that you've used before that apply to the same situation, and probably you can get similar results. But if your strategy is just your overall system, then you're not going to have that same outcome. Now, I know, I know it's only a short video and we're cramming a lot in here. So for now, it might sound like this thing's overcomplicated, it's confusing, you can't keep up, you don't wanna do this, but that's just for now. We're gonna take it step by step, and believe me, by following this approach, you're actually going to be simplifying everything you do, and it's actually quite simple to follow, but we'll just do it one step at a time. So for now, the first important step is to complete a simple practical exercise to break down your system. I want you to really dig deep and list down all the steps that you go through in your system to reach your trade entry, and then the steps after that until the trade exit. And believe me, you need to dig deep with this. Don't just go surface level. Like I know already that some of you will do this activity and you'll complete it in 10 minutes. And this will probably mean that you haven't thought deeply enough. You need to probably take at least an hour or maybe even more to really think. You need to list down every step you take in your decision-making process, even down to which chart you choose to look at first. Why? Because maybe there's a better strategy that you can use for each of these steps and optimize your overall system. At each stage, you want to be asking yourself, what are you trying to do and why are you trying to do it? Think deeply about this and be honest. Don't sugarcoat it. If something you're doing is completely random at, at the moment or has no real answer as to why you're doing it, then be honest because that will be a clear step that you can then work on and it might improve your trading. And remember, these are the fixed steps, not variable. So you've got to try and be objective about it. Write them in a way that you could actually hand this to someone else who trades a different way and doesn't know anything about your trading and they could just slot their own strategies into each step to fulfill that step and they can follow your recipe. Now already by doing this, it should help you to organize your thinking and understand where you might have some flaws or weaknesses in your overall approach. So it's already going to be a useful exercise for you. But it will become even more useful when we release the next parts of this series, where we go further into the whole concept of system and learn how to improve our systems. And then we'll start to talk about strategies, including how whatever method of trading that you're following fuels those strategies and allows you to really build solid cases for every single trade that you open. Now, of course, I'm anticipating some questions from people about this because this is probably something brand new for a lot of you. We went through it quite quickly. Some of you might think it's complicated. So feel free to ask away. And if you found this video helpful and you're looking forward to seeing the next videos, please do hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of them. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care and I will see you soon.